Hello, and welcome to Represent NYC on the Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Thank you all for joining us. I'm New York State Controller Tom DiNapoli. As we all know, one of the most important elections in our nation's history is quickly approaching, November 3rd. Uh, just uh, uh, by way of a, a reminder, and you'll be hearing more about this in our discussion, the deadline to register to vote is October 9th, two days away from the time of this broadcast, and I think there'll be a rebroadcast on Sunday the 11th, so that information may be a little dated, but everything else we're going to talk about certainly won't be dated information. Many folks this year are choosing to vote by absentee ballot because of the pandemic. Certainly the issue of election security uh, is foremost in everyone's mind, and the, the importance of this election is uh, certainly a, a topic I'm going to be talking about with uh, both of our guests, but particularly with our first guest. Else My first guest on. is uh, Assemblymember Charles, Charles Levine, Chuck Any Levine. Uh, Assemblymember Levine was elected in 2004 to represent uh, parts of Nassau County in the State Assembly, great city of Glen Cove, his home community, and parts of my town of North Hempstead and parts of the town of Oyster Bay as well. Uh, I had the privilege to serve with Chuck Levine when I was in the State Assembly. And I have to say, um, and you can quote me, he was one of my favorite colleagues. Smart, dedicated, hardworking, thoughtful. And he continues uh, to represent uh, all of us in New York with great distinction. He chairs the very important Assembly Standing Committee on Election Law. So all these issues relating to uh, elections, absentee ballots, security, are, are very much in his bailiwick. And, and Chuck has really been a leader as well on reforming our uh, election laws to make it easier for people to participate. So we have a lot to talk about with Assemblymember uh, Chuck Levine. Chuck, thanks so much for joining us. Um, you get the thanks. But in full disclosure, I think that your audience, our audience, should know that you also have family roots in the city of Glen Cove. So this is not a place with which you are unfamiliar. And it was my great pleasure to work with you, my friend, in the State Assembly. And uh, if there was anyone who guided me through the process and watched out for me and kept me from making the worst of mistakes, it was you, my friend. And I've always modeled myself after after you, and it's great to see you, and much love from my family to you. Back at you in, in every way. Chuck, you know, update us. I mean, you've had so many uh, legislative proposals, many of which enacted into law now, uh, hearings that predate, you know, what we're going through in 2020. How about just giving us a run through on some of the changes that have made it easier for, for people to participate, but, you know, just give us a sense of, of what has been the evolution in terms of opening up the process for people to participate that you've been shepherding through the state legislature. So as, as we know, there have been great changes during the course of the last two years. And I would like to single out uh, not, many, of, many of my colleagues, but especially Senator Zelnor Myrie, who heads the um, elections committee in the state Senate. Um, things we would never have been able to even dream of uh, more than two years ago have now become law in the state of New York and they include early voting. This was such a battle for so many years, and we have this, and it's a wonderful thing. Anytime we can make it easier for people to vote, anytime we can in, uh, improve the process, we improve the product. So uh, early voting will take place from uh, October the 24th uh, until um, the day before or two days before Election Day over the course of two weekends. And this is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And uh, it is a growing movement across the country to have early voting. Now, in addition to that, we um, uh, this year will have absentee ballots that can be cast because of the COVID crisis. Um, there were some constitutional questions uh, with respect to this, but we have solved those constitutional questions. And in the future, there will be um, absentee balloting uh, th throughout the state of New York, COVID or, or no COVID. Uh, that's something that's going to be on the ballot for the uh, public to uh, 
uh, to pass. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we um, allowed uh, 16 and 17 year olds to be able to pre-register to vote. Now they can't vote until they're old enough to vote, but it gives them the opportunity to register very, very early because we know the earlier people are involved uh, in the political process. And I can only think of your own life uh, being uh, so young when you wanted to run for the uh, Board of Education uh, in Mineola that you needed special, uh, special decision, I think from the state attorney general in order to do that. Uh, our future depends on all of our citizens working together because we're all in this together. And the earlier we can get young people uh, into the uh, governmental system, uh, the better it is for all of us. Now, uh, a couple of other things that we were able to accomplish uh, this year, um, most of those things uh, occurred last year in terms of legislative achievements, were this. Um, absentee ballots can now be requested more than 30 days before an election. For many, many years, uh, in fact, anytime uh, we had the absentee ballot system, you couldn't request an absentee ballot until 30 days before an election. So we have seen in the state of New York, uh, as a result of relaxation of that uh, rule, uh, unnecessary rule, uh, we have seen record numbers of applications for absentee ballots. Uh, I don't have the figures as of today, but the figures as of two weeks ago, um, were that more than half a million absentee ballots had already been requested uh, in the state of New York. And by now, I bet it's uh, well in excess of six uh, to 700,000. And that is a good thing as well. Um, a couple of other things that we were able to accomplish is this. Uh, as we all know, the United States Post Office uh, was uh, not entirely cooperative to be as diplomatic as possible during the primary um, uh, elections we had. Uh, a lot of uh, ballots, or a lot of absentee ballots, uh, envelopes, came back to the boards of election without postmarks on them. So we have now established a new rule. As long as an absentee ballot is received by the Board of Elections the, by the day after, not the day, by the day after uh, the election that is not postmarked, it will count. We will uh, uh, not begin to open uh, absentee uh, ballots, overseas and military ballots until November the 10th. So we have that sort of uh, time constraint that we have to be aware of um, another thing, uh, another bill that was passed involves uh, making it easier for people to register to vote anytime they interact with any of the state agencies. We're waiting for the governor to sign that bill into law, and I'm sure the governor is giving it uh, real consideration. And finally, there was a bill that I was very um, happy to be able to uh, sponsor that would uh, allow uh, for any absentee ballot that has a technical problem. That is, the, the uh, privacy envelope uh, may not be signed um, in the right, on the right line. Uh, the envelope itself may not be actually sealed. It might be uh, uh, sealed uh, by the use of uh, scotch tape. Those things would all, uh, at time was, mean that that ballot, ballot could be challenged. Now uh, the boards of election must give notice uh, to the voters that there is a problem uh, with their uh, absentee ballots and they're given an opportunity to be able to cure that. So these are all good things. They are steps in the right direction. Uh, and, and Chuck, those are a lot of steps and many reforms that have been pending for a long time. So again, my compliments to you and, and Senator Myrie for shepherding this. And obviously we should give a shout out to Speaker Carl Hasty and Majority Leader Andrew Stewart Cousins because their leadership also uh, enabled uh, these measures to be passed on to Governor Cuomo for his approval. Uh, I just want to go over some of the dates you, you, you mentioned again, just to remind everybody. So uh, the uh, October 9th is uh, the last day for registration, uh, mail or, or in person. Um, October 14th is the, the day your local board of election must receive a mail-in registration or request to change an address. Uh, but the, they have to be postmarked by October 9th. Uh, the requesting of, of absentee ballots online, uh, you know, by email, fax, or mail uh, as well, October 27th, uh, or call the Board of Elections, you know, by that date. Um, by November 2nd, you can apply in person for an absentee ballot. And uh, I think, as you mentioned, the postmark uh, November 3rd is election day, so if there is a postmark, that would be the day for, uh, and you mentioned the overseas and military ballots obviously come in 
uh, at, a, at a later period of time. You mentioned the early voting, which is a new option <clears throat> from October 24th to November 1st, but I assume uh, viewers should uh, contact their local Board of Elections to find out what sites are providing uh, early voting and what the hours are. I assume that varies, obviously, depending on you know, which county you live in. It does vary county to county, and those sites are determined by the election commissioners, and uh, our election commissioners are um, Republican and Democrat, mm -hmm. uh, Democratic, so um, the locations of the early voting sites um, is a matter of consensus between both political parties. Um, those locations um, are easily um, locatable on the boards of election websites. Every board of elections uh, has its own website and um, they are uh, broadcasting um, the locations of early voting. Give us a few words about the confidence people should have about the electoral process and you know, any thoughts that you have moving forward. I mean, especially for our, our, our neighbors here in the five boroughs of New York City, it just seems that every year there's another issue with the New York City Board of Elections. Is this an area that your committee is going to be taking a, a deeper dive in terms of trying to evaluate how to make sure that uh, that, that works more smoothly? That's what statewide um, overseeing and monitoring is all about. Unfortunately, there were almost 85,000, it was 84,000 absentee ballots in Queens alone that were disallowed. Um, so um, there's a growing consciousness, uh, not only in New York City, although New York City is really one of the locations where we get the great uh, incentive and the great impetus for trying to make things better, uh, as is true of the state of New York in general. But there's a growing emphasis on our need to address uh, Americans' right to vote. And it's a right. It's not a privilege. It is a right uh, to be able to vote. So we are making progress. And we're making progress in New York State, I'm very proud to report. Uh, and we're doing this in the midst of what seems to be a national effort on the part of some um, to persuade our citizens to vote, uh, to view the voting uh, process uh, with great, great cynicism. Uh, I think it's important for us all to remember that the basic American rule, the basic American proposition is majority rule. That's been it since the beginning. With whatever faults we've had, we've always been able to honestly view our history and move forward. And uh, majority rule means we have to depend on voting more people involved, the better, the better it is. So those of us on the state level, uh, whether we're Republicans or we're Democrats, and this is pretty much true nationally, not entirely true, but pretty much true, whether we are Republican uh, voting officials, election officials, or Democratic uh, election officials, we uh, have been stating with great, great emphasis uh, that the voting system works. The voting by mail works. The amount of voting fraud is so infinitesimal. In fact, one of the more conservative think tanks has estimated that the amount of voting fraud in this country over the last quarter of a century is 0. 000, 000, 000, 007. But we have to have faith in each other as Americans, and we must do everything we can to stand up for the American right to vote. Oh, you said you said it eloquently, and you're fighting hard for that. <laughs> Just a quick uh, question on those absentee ballots. Again, the goal is for them to be postmarked if you're mailing them in by November 3rd. But you mentioned, you know, because there was that issue of of if there wasn't a, a postmark stamp. If it, so, if an absentee ballot comes in later without a postmark, no, if it's not postmarked and it doesn't arrive on November the 4th, it is not going to count. All the more reason for those who will decide to vote by absentee ballot to do it as early as possible, to make sure your boards of election get it uh, by, uh, in advance of the, uh, the date of the election. The, and we have to remember as well, the boards are gonna be swamped because we've never, we've never had the experience of seeing this many absentee ballots before. Yeah. So the earlier the better. And, yeah. um, and voting in person, uh, is, uh, is still available for either early voting or on election day in New York State. We covered a lot of territory and obviously uh, so key what you said because many people will be voting absentee 
get it in as early as possible. The postmark has to be November 3rd. And if it comes in after November 4th, you know, you run the risk of it not being counted with the obvious exception, as you said, for the military ballots and the overseas ballots. Uh, Assembly member Chuck Levine, we're just about out of time. I wanna thank you. You covered a lot of territory, hopefully given our viewers a little more comfort. First of all, that in New York State, we are really working hard to make the process as open and as accessible as, as possible to vote, but also understanding the importance of the security of the vote. And I know that the job is not uh, totally done yet, and, and you and your committee, and thanks to your continued leadership, you're gonna work to improve the process even more as we go forward. So remind everybody how important it is to get out there and vote by November 3rd, however you choose to vote, early voting absentee or in person on November 3rd. Thanks again for the two kind words, New York State Controller Tom DiNapoli. In essence, two things I wanna say. Thanks for what you do for the state of New York. Number two, if we don't vote, someone else votes for us, and we don't want that. Thanks, Chuck. Let me appreciate your time. Our, our next guest is another wonderful member of the State Assembly. Uh, I didn't have the chance to serve with Assemblymember Yuli New directly because I was already in the Controller's Office, but I've gotten to know her well. Uh, she has more than hit the ground running representing her very diverse and very exciting district in New York City. She is a dynamo. She is a very progressive voice, a reform voice. Uh, we have a couple of different topics uh, to talk to her about, but um, she is someone who brought great experience in, in public policy uh, to her tenure uh, serving in the assembly. She actually served as a chief of staff for assembly member Ron Kim before she was elected. She represents, um, the place where my New York City office is located. She represents the Lower East Side, South Street Seaport, Chinatown, Financial District, Battery Park City, certainly some of the most dynamic and exciting neighborhoods uh, in New York City. And uh, the, just so much happening in her district. Really is a privilege for me to welcome Eileen. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. And obviously, you know, you're a big hero of mine and I can't wait to be able to kind of repeat our show. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we just had Chuck Levine on, your colleague, and uh, Chuck in his role chairing the uh, election committee. We talked a lot about uh, the elections, but actually, you know, the inspiration for, for having you and Chuck on comes from our friend Victoria Burt from uh, Manhattan Neighborhood Network, because you had some you know, concerns that you were hearing from your constituents yeah. about not only the importance of participating in elections, but some real concern about just how the process was unfolding. So before we get into some of the other issues, how about just giving us you know, your thoughts about where we're at with the New York City Board of Elections and you know, how, how you think people should view uh, voting on November 3rd, however they choose to do it, early voting, absentee, or in-person voting. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, just for folks um, who probably don't realize this, but, you know, my constituents actually had a couple of concerns when they first were getting their ballot. Some of them had, you know, military ballot on their ballot. Uh, people were seeing that, you know, folks in Brooklyn were getting the wrong addresses um, on their ballots, um, wrong people <laughs> on their ballots. Um, the ballot did not meet, uh, match the envelope. Um, and then some folks who were coming to uh, the post office to go and drop off their ballot um, were told that uh, they were weren't putting enough postage on it because it's uh, heavier than one ounce. Some ballots could be heavier than one ounce. Um, and so for the November election, I think that it's essential that our, um, you know, our neighbors, all New Yorkers have the opportunity to safely and easily vote um, amidst this uh, pandemic uh, atmosphere and also um, understanding, you know, what their rights are as well. Uh, most New Yorkers might opt to uh, vote absentee for the sake of their health. And we need to make sure to ensure that um, you know, all of these uh, little things that are kind of popping up, people know about them. You know, there, there's been an article out, obviously, about how, you know, the post office is supposed to mail all ballots. Um, I think that, you know, a lot of times people are like, it's a myth that you need to put postage on it. It's a myth. But actually, um, we just want people to know that there have been some ballots returned to folks. There have been some folks who didn't, uh, you know, follow that procedure. Um, and so we just want to double check and make sure that people are are not getting disenfranchised um, through throughout. And with the upcoming elections, I feel like you know there's no reason that you know people should have to choose to risk their health um, in an attempt to vote. I think that we have to make sure to. 
uh, have a bill that makes it so that we can have prepaid postage. People shouldn't have to worry about that. There are 18 other states that are doing it. I think that we should have that as well. Um, you know, prepaid postage will take that fear out of um, this uh, process. And, you know, I think that people are, are confused because the primary had some prepaid postage and, uh, and, and this election did not. And so that was the first time in New York that they had prepaid postage through the executive order by the governor. And so this is the first time that, you know, um, they had that. And then now, again, we don't have prepaid postage and other states are, you know, telling folks like, well, we don't have to pay for it. So it's a very interesting thing. And it's a poll tax, I think, to have to pay for postage when, um, you know, just to get your vote in. So yeah, that's what I mean, that's well said. And obviously, we would, we've been improvising in so many ways in response to COVID-19. But there are some good lessons in terms of what you were just talking about with the prepay postage. And there should be no, you shouldn't have to have an, a reason. If you want an absentee ballot, you know, I remember in the old days, you always had to put, you know, you're on vacation, you know, your, your job kept you away, you're in prison, whatever. If people need an absentee ballot, let them get an absentee ballot. You know, making, making that as accessible uh, as possible. I, I, you know, I've thought about this. I've decided I'm gonna vote in person. Uh, I, I've just decided for me, that's what I, I feel most comfortable. But I think to your point, in terms of people worried about uh, their health and being out there, you know, making sure that that option is there for the absentee ballot participation, to vote by mail, the early voting, another, another option. And as we talked about with Chuck Levine, get the absentee ballot in as early as possible. So in fact, the postmark is there you know, by November 3rd, so it could be counted. Um, and, and thanks for your leadership. And I, and I love how you said, in effect, it's a poll tax if you're requiring people to, you know, to pay, to pay for the postage. I want to touch on a couple of other things in, in the short time that we have. You know, your district has so many small businesses that have really been hit hard by what we're going through. I know you've been working with Senator Kavanaugh uh, on the Small Business Recovery Lease Act, because there's a the big issue about you know, how do you keep up with the rent payments, the issue for the landlords with how do, you, how do they keep up with their obligations and taxes and so on. Can you speak just a little bit about, you know, how you see the small business dynamic? How can we save our small businesses? And, and, and talk a little bit about that, uh, that Small Business Recovery Lease Act and why you think something like that would be so important. So, I mean, obviously, you know, you and I see things very similar in this sense because you get to see the economy the way that it is. And we all know that this is a domino effect, um, you know, with with our small businesses, it, they are the largest employers of people and we are seeing more and more people unemployed. Why is that? Because more and more of our small businesses are having to shut down. And so, you know, in my district, we saw and felt the effects of um, the pandemic before anybody else. And that, that was starting, you know, February, January, February about, um, because, you know, we started to see uh, that people were being xenophobic and racist towards um, the small businesses here in Chinatown. And that also affected, you know, Little Italy, that affected, you know, South Street Seaboard, that affected the financial district because people just weren't coming down here. And I think that, you know, um, you know, the recovery has been really tough and we've lost so many of our small businesses in this crisis because of that. And if we're not helping to make sure that we cover some of the biggest expenses like commercial rent um, and also making sure that we're covering, um, you know, the, the expenses of the landlords, um, like our small landlords in Chinatown, they're not like these giant landlords. They're, you know, small landlords that, you know, we're finally able to get some property. Um, this, this is for Little Italy too. Like, you know, some of these are just, they own one building. Yeah. Or, or only two buildings and um, and their property taxes are very, very unevenly um, actually dispersed here in New York. Um, so, you know, they're getting charged the same property taxes as folks in Fayette for these giant huge buildings, right? And so I think that it's really important that we are actually um, helping to uh, bridge some of that gap. And I think it's urgent to be able to put a, a cushion and a stop gap to this domino effect that we're seeing in our economy. And I think that this is one of the ways to do that, right? And we should have been doing that um, in March. We should have been doing that um, in our budget then. We should have been doing, you know, so I mean, your revenue projections also show that, right? Um, that, you know, certainly the, 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 the amount that um, it will take for recovery is now exponentially growing and it, it's compounded because as we're seeing higher unemployment, we're also seeing a higher need and we're also seeing a huge lack in revenue and we're also seeing that, you know, folks are going to need that measure more and more and the cost of recovery may or may not be out of our hands soon because we will not be able to afford it because there will not be, um, you know, a way to make up that gap because before it was 
10 billion. Now it's, and then it was 16 billion, right? Your, your revenue projection showed yeah. that. And then yeah. it was 36 billion. And now it's going to be 60 something billion. And like, we just, we just can't um, keep on letting it grow. So what we have to do is help um, some of our small businesses, help people be able to have their jobs um, kept going and um, help people through the winter. A lot of our small businesses are restaurants and um, folks who were mandatorily closed. Um, so I think that it's really important that we are able to help that stopgap measure. For, for the small businesses and, and those landlords, many of whom, as you point out, are small landlords, not you know uh, owning multiple large buildings. That Small Business Recovery Lease Act that you've proposed uh, really could make a big difference. And you just touched on, uh, we only have a couple of minutes left, but I want to talk quickly about the restaurant issue. Very important in your district. Obviously, you and I stood together on 9-11 in, in Chinatown with Justin and our friends from CCBA. Chinatown, as so many restaurants, have been a key part of bringing tourists to the neighborhood. And, and our report just showed for New York City, we could lose as many of half of our restaurants. Give us a, just a quick update. Where are we at now? We've we seen some improvement with the slow reopening. I, I know now indoor dining is at 25% long term. That's not going to work, but it's a step in the right direction. Have you seen progress since you and I stood together in Chinatown a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, I mean, I've seen like a lot of progress, but I've also seen a lot of deterrence to that progress, right? We are not allowed to shut down certain streets. Um, certain things are making it harder. You know, the the ticketing situation, we just had um, our oath commissioner come and talk to us, but um, it really is really difficult because, um, you know, the state and the city and the different agencies are, are not talking to one another. And so DOT could be issuing a summons for one thing, and then so they move something, and then SLA will be summing, uh, finding them for doing that move, you know, and so like it could be, you know, back and forth, back and forth for a lot of folks. And I think that's really, really hard for um, some of our small businesses to thrive. Um, because some of these small businesses and some of these restaurants, you know, they can seat like 200 people regularly, but outside they can seat 14. So I think that it's it's a big disparity in um, the revenue and it's a big disparity in um, the cost that they have to do to, to put out the um, the safety measures and to make sure that they do their builds, et cetera. And it's, you know, keep hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer on hand. Like all of it is a cost to these small businesses um, when there hasn't been as much revenue generation. So I know that it's really, really hard to get back on their I think, you know, your advocacy on behalf of all the small businesses, certainly the restaurants particularly, it, it's, it's so important. It, it, it's financial help to get them through this tough time. It's common sense regulation that you just touched on. And I'm hopeful if, if and when we get more uh, federal stimulus money in the House bill, there's that $120 billion for that restaurant stabilization fund. What a big difference that would make. Assembly member Yuli knew we're, we're running out of time. We'll have to have you back again because we can keep talking. And you represent an incredibly dynamic part of the city and you are an incredibly dynamic member of the New York State Assembly. And uh, if I could say so, good luck on November 3rd. And, and, I'm, and I'm sure it's gonna be fine. We look forward to continuing to work uh, with you. I wanna thank everybody for uh, listening to our conversations with Assembly Member Yuli Nu, with Assemblyman Chuck Levine as well. A very important discussion, particularly on the issue of elections. Uh, you've been watching represent NYC on the Manhattan Neighborhood Network. I'm State Controller Tom DiNapoli. Thank you for being with us. Mm -hmm.